Namaskar. India is on the road to economic revival. The GST collections for July, though slightly lower than June, are a more complete indication of the revival than the previous month because June had February, March and April 2020 reliefs being paid up. Now we'll be focusing on some of the green shoots in this uh, news night, but that's going to be in our analysis segment. Let's first begin with the headlines. My name is Mark Lynn. Home Minister Amit Shah tests positive for COVID-19, admitted to Gurugram's Medanta Hospital. In a tweet, Amit Shah says that he's fine. Admission only on the advice of doctors. Leaders across the political spectrum wish him a speedy recovery. Tamil Nadu Governor Banwari Lal Purohit also tests positive for COVID-19. Recovery rate for COVID-19 sees a big jump with over 51,000 recoveries in the last 24 hours. Case fatality rate also improves further to 2.13%. India and China Corps Commander level talks underway at Maldo on the Chinese controlled side of the border. This round of talks is mainly focusing on disengagement in the Pengong So area. Probe into the Kerala gold smuggling case widens as the NIA arrests six more persons and conducts raids at several places in the state. NIA has already arrested the kingpin in the case Swapna Suresh and interrogated the former principal secretary to the chief minister. The death toll in the Punjab hooch tragedy nears 100. Over 25 people, including the alleged kingpin, are arrested. Action against 13 officials of the police and excise departments. And Arogya gear, I, I beg your pardon, Ayodhya gears up for the Grand Bhumi Pujan ceremony for the Ram Temple scheduled for August 5. Holy soil and waters from different parts of the country are being brought to Ayodhya. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu in his Facebook post extols the universal message of Lord Ram. Our top story, Union Home Minister Amit Shah announced on Twitter that he has tested positive for coronavirus and is getting admitted to a hospital following the advice of doctors. After experiencing initial mild symptoms of coronavirus, I got myself tested. The report came back positive. My health is fine, but I am being admitted to a hospital on the advice of doctors. I request that all of you who have come in contact with me in the last few days, please isolate yourself and get your inquiry done. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh wished good health to Amit Shah. Amit Ji, your perseverance and willpower in the face of every challenge has been an example for one and all. I firmly believe you will definitely defeat the challenge of coronavirus. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan tweeted, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, Union Home Minister Amit Shah continued to serve the public. I got the news of his testing positive for coronavirus. I am confident that under the care of doctors and thanks to his strong willpower, he will defeat coronavirus. I pray for his speedy recovery. Rail Minister Piyush Goel tweeted, Union Home Minister Amit Shahji has led the battle against COVID-19 with his guidance, giving it a new direction. I am confident that you will recover fully soon. We will keep benefiting from your farsightedness and governance abilities. I pray for your early recovery. The Uttar Pradesh Minister Kamal Rani Varun died of COVID-19 at a hospital in Lucknow on Sunday. The 62-year-old technical education minister had tested positive for COVID-19 on July 18. The Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath announced state mourning after her demise. And President Ramnath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi also expressed grief at the demise of Kamal Rani Varun. The President said she was well respected for serving people at the grassroots. The Prime Minister recalled the important role she has played in strengthening the BJP in the state.
Uttar Pradesh Minister Kamal Rani Varun died of COVID-19, the first minister in the state to succumb to the disease. She was 62. The technical education minister who tested positive for COVID-19 on July 18th was the only woman cabinet minister in the state, breathed her last at the Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences. She had comorbidities including diabetes, hypertension and hyperthyroidism. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath announced a state mourning after the demise of Kamal Rani and in a mark of respect to his departed colleague, cancelled his scheduled visit to Ayodhya to oversee the preparations for the groundbreaking ceremony for building of the Ram Temple there. Simati Kamal Rani Varun, Ek Lokpriya Janneta or Barishta Samas Siviti, Bari Kosalta Purvak, Onone Mantri Mandal Mepna Karikia. उनका दिवंगत होना समाज का भी सरकार का भी और पार्टी की भी यह पुण्य क्षति है ऑफरिंग कंडोलेंसेस टू द बिरीव फैमिली प्रेसिडेंट रामनाथ कोविंद सेड सडन बाय द अनटाइमली डिमाइज ऑफ श्रीमती कमल रानी वरुण कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर इन द उत्तर प्रदेश गवर्नमेंट वेल रिस्पेक्टेड फॉर सर्विंग पीपल एट द ग्रास रूट्स शी हैड आल्सो सर्वड एज एन एमपी इन द लोकसभा ट्वाइस माय कंडोलेंसेस टू हर फैमिली एंड फॉलोअर्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी एक्सप्रेस सॉरो ऑन द अनटाइमली डेथ ऑफ यूपी मिनिस्टर he tweeted, very sad with the death of Uttar Pradesh Government Minister Kamal Rani Varun. Her whole life was dedicated to social service. She played an important role in strengthening the BJP in the state. My condolences with her family and supporters in this hour of grief. Om Shanti. An MLA from the Ghatampur Assembly constituency, Kamal Rani was also a two-term MP of 11th and 12th Lok Sabha. Newsnight Desk, TD News. Tamil Nadu Governor Bhamradi Lal Purohit has also tested positive for COVID-19. He was admitted to a private hospital in Chennai. This comes just days after Raj Bhavan announced his isolation after 84 staffers at his residence had tested positive for COVID-19. However, no official statement has been released on the matter. Tamil Nadu Governor Banwari Lal Purohit has been tested positive for COVID-19. He was admitted to a private hospital in Chennai. This comes just days after Raj Bhavan announced his isolation after 84 staffers at his residence tested positive for COVID-19. Yeah, However, no official statement has been released on the matter. Actor Amitabh Bachchan has been discharged from Mumbai's Nanavati Hospital where he was being treated for COVID-19 after a 23rd day stay on Sunday. The 77 years old actor announced on July 11th that he had tested positive for the virus and was in hospital. Streets in Chennai wore a deserted look as the state observed a complete lockdown on Sunday. Along with lockdown extension, the Tamil Nadu government has also extended the total Sunday lockdown in the state through August as well. In a bid to augment the testing facilities, Odisha government allowed private hospitals, nursing homes and laboratories to conduct COVID-19 tests through rapid antigen and RT-PCR methods. The department issued a separate set of guidelines for conducting sample tests both under rapid antigen and RT-PCR. For rapid antigen test, the private bodies can charge maximum of rupees 450, while the price for RT-PCR test is fixed at rupees 2200 per test. Odisha government allows private hospitals, nursing homes, and labs to conduct COVID-19 tests through rapid antigen PCR methods. District Collector of Andhra Pradesh, West Godavari, has ordered curfew in the district of wake of COVID-19, with the center making further relaxations in the lockdown as part of Unlock 3.0. The Andhra Pradesh government also announced removal of restrictions on interstate transport. The process of unlock of the Itanagar Capital Complex region starts from tomorrow with certain restrictions. State's Chief Secretary Naresh Kumar in a virtual press conference said that Arunachal Pradesh, that Arunachal Pradesh government has decided to lift the lockdown in the capital complex area except the containment zone. The state government had imposed a total lockdown of the Itanagar capital region from July 6th last month in view of rapid spike in COVID-19 positive cases. 
The Assam government has allowed malls, hotels and restaurants to operate following strict COVID-19 norms. In an order, the chief secretary said that malls and gymnasiums are allowed to operate between Monday to Friday. The order further stated that restaurants, hotels and other hospitality services are allowed to operate on all days except Saturday and Sunday with strict maintenance of COVID-19 protocols. Well, Indian and Chinese Army Corps commanders, their meeting is underway at uh, Moldo on the Chinese side of the LAC. Disengagement at Pangong So is likely to be discussed. And this, in fact, is the fifth Corps commander level meeting between India and China since the standoff began in May. Nandita Dagar puts it into context for us. The fifth round of Corps commander level meeting between Indian and Chinese PLA armies is currently underway at Moldo, which is on the Chinese side of the LAC. The agenda of this meeting is disengagement of the Chinese PLA troops from fingers 4 to 8 at the Pangongso Lake. The Chinese have been reluctant to disengage at Pangongso and that is why, uh, much like the three previous core commander level talks which went on for more than 15 hours, it is expected that this meeting too will go on into the wee hours of the night. In New Delhi, this is Nandita Dagar for DD News. Ayodhya is getting ready for the grand Bhumi Poojan ceremony of the Ram Temple. Holy soil and water from different parts of the country are being brought to Ayodhya. More in this ground report. A historic event in unprecedented times. Authorities in Ayodhya are leaving no stone unturned to ensure all COVID-19 protocols are followed during the foundation stone laying ceremony on 5th August. Sanitization teams are hard at work. The state's fire department is overseeing these efforts along with municipal workers. In view of the coronavirus pandemic, priests and organizers are appealing to people to stay at home and watch the ceremony on DD News and DD National. <laughs> और भी जो भी शहरी क्षेत्र हैं बाजार हैं और जो मुहल्ले हैं सब जगह सेंटाइजर का कार्य किया जा रहा है ताकि जो है 19 को भी इससे बचाओ हनुमान जी राजा के रूप में यहां विराजमान हैं पहले भारत के सस्वी प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी हनुमानगढ़ी आएंगे दर्शन और पूजन करेंगे उसके बाद रामला का दर्शन करेंगे with a host of dignitaries expected to attend the event, security is also a high priority. Past Tarik ko jo bhumi pujan ka aitihasik samaro aitya ji mein hone ja raha hai, usme hamare Pradhan Mantri ji ki suraksha ke liye jo protocol hai, usme bhimne suraksha agencies ke saath hamlog samanvay asthapit karke us protocol ke hisab se aitya mein suraksha unko di ja rahi hai. The eve of the ceremony will see a grand depot serve or festival of lights in Ayodhya. The city will glitter against the night sky in anticipation of the much-awaited ceremony. Three lakh diyas will be lit. One lakh diyas have come from across the country. Depot serve का plan कर रखा है. मंदिर में भापे दीपावली वो मिट्टी के दिए उसकी उसकी व्यवस्थाएं हो रही हैं जगह-जगह पर वो हम लोग दीवे प्रज्वलित करेंगे चार की तारीख को भी और पांच तारीख को भी. Plus भगवान के नाम का संकीर्तन और कुछ रामायण का पाठ the tale of devotion of brothers Radhesham Pandey and Mahakavi Trifala can be seen in Ayodhya. Trifala is visually challenged since birth, but that never affected his faith and devotion towards Lord Ram. The brothers have travelled to almost all the places associated with Lord Ram, both in India and Sri Lanka. They have collected water and sand from 151 rivers, 8 major rivers, 3 seas and soil from 16 places in Sri Lanka. All this will become a part of Lord Ram's grand temple once the construction begins. Paidal, motorcycle, cycle, hawaii jaha, train, bus yatra karke, sab ikattha kiya ki Bhagawan Sri Ram ke pavitra janam bhoomi ki niu mein, mein, mandir ke niu mein, mein in sab ko dhoon. Kalpana matra tha, lekin Bhagawan Sri Ram ki kripa se, aaj o shakar hua. In another show of devotion, Assam-based sculptor Ranjit Mandal and his father are working day and night, making idols depicting stories from the Ram Katha Kunj. These sculptors, covering 125 scripts, will be exhibited in the Ram Temple courtyard. The father-son duo began their work in 2013. Ram Katha Kunj is the 
Bricks and stones with carvings from across the country have been collected over the years at the Ram Temple complex. They will be used in the construction of the temple and are being given finishing touches. हमारे अयोध्या में चूंकि आप देख रहे होंगे ये 35 वर्षों से कार्य चल रहा है यहाँ कार्यशाला राम जन्मभूमि का और आज वह घड़ियाँ आई हैं जिसके लिए हम लोग कई पीढ़ियों से इंतजार करते आ रहे थे एंथुजियाजम फॉर द इवेंट इज इन रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू अयोध्या द जैन कम्युनिटी इन अहमदाबाद हैज डोनेटेड अ सिल्वर ब्रिक फॉर द राम टेम्पल इन अयोध्या वाटर फ्रॉम द होली बिंदु सागर लेक नियर द लिंग राज टेम्पल इन भुवनेश्वर हैज ऑल्सो बीन सेंट टू अयोध्या फॉर द भूमि पूजन सेरेमनी ऑन ऑगस्ट फिफ्थ With bureau inputs, News Night Desk, DD News. Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu, in a Facebook post, praised the universal message of Lord Ram. He said the historic Bhumi Pujan is bringing the glory of the past alive and enshrining the values cherished by the people. He quoted the Vedic scholar Arthur Anthony Macdonald uh, to say that Ram's ideals, ideas, as he as told in the Indian texts, are secular in origin. Their influence on life and thought of people, having been profound over at least two and a half millennia. Here's more. As Ayodhya prepares for the foundation stone laying ceremony of the Ram Temple, Vice President M. Venka and I do called upon people to understand and spread the universal message of dharm or righteousness as depicted in the timeless epic Ramayan. In a Facebook post titled Rebuilding the Shrine, Enshrining the Values, the Vice President expressed happiness over the proposed building of Lord Ram's temple in Ayodhya from August 5th. The Vice President said, Lord Ram's life exemplified values critical for establishing a just and responsible social order. Ramayan is a relevant guide even today. The Vice President described Ram Raja as an ideal of a people-centric democratic governance founded on values of empathy, inclusion and good governance. The Ramayan Connect ties many Southeast Asian countries including Java, Bali, Malaya, Thailand, Laos and Cambodia together. The International Ramayan Festival was launched in the year 2015 to strengthen the cultural connect that the epic establishes. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the event. Ramayana ke baate jin vishon ke usme charcha hai wo aaj bhi kitni relevant hai विश्व में जहां जहां राम और रामायण से संपर्क रहा है जो लोग गर्व करते हैं उसी एक तंतु के साथ उसको जोड़ करके आज उसको अगर संबंधों को विकसित किया जाए तो संबंध अपनेपन वाले बन जाते हैं और वो डिप्लोमेटिक रिलेशन से भी एक अधिक ताकतवर बन जाते हैं नेक्स्ट लेवल उसका प्राप्त होता है In 2017, in a display of warm and historic ties between India and the Philippines, on a global platform, the opening ceremony of the 31st ASEAN Summit in Manila witnessed a grand Ramayan ballet performed before world leaders, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Praising the two millennia old epic, Venga and Idu said that the Ramayan encapsulates a vision that is so universal that it has left a conspicuous and profound influence on the culture of many countries in Southeast Asia. Quoting the Vedic and Sanskrit scholar Arthur Anthony Macdonald, the Vice President said that Ram's ideas, as told in the Indian texts, are secular in origin and their influence on the life and thought of people has been profound over at least two and a half millennia. From the Jataka tales to Angkor Wat's panels depicting scenes from Ramayan and the famous Ramayan ballet at the Prambanan Temple in Indonesia, Ramayan's influence on the cultural canvas of the world cuts across geographical and religious boundaries. Ramayan has been adapted by other religions like Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism in some form or the other. Clearly, Ramayan has universal appeal cutting across geographical and religious boundaries. Newsnight Desk, DD India. Well, the primary sector is laying the foundation for economic revival. 
The sowing area under Kharif crops has increased by 13.92% compared to last year. And the government is working with the RBI on the industry's need for restructuring of loans. Credit to MSME is being prioritized and growth is moving up from a trough in April. And the GST collection in July at 87,422 crore rupees is a sign of economic activity picking up. More on this report. While the lockdown and COVID pandemic have had an adverse impact on the Indian economy, a V-shaped recovery is clearly being witnessed. The growth rate of index of eight core industries declined by 15% in June compared to a decline of 22% the previous month of May and 37% in April. The eight core industries are coal, crude oil, natural gas, refinery products, fertilizers, steel, cement and electricity and comprise 40.27% of the weight of items included in the index of industrial production. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has clarified that the government is working with the RBI on the industry's need for restructuring of loans due to the COVID-19 impact. She told the National Executive Council meeting of FICI at the end of July that every step which is being announced and taken is taken after exhaustive consultations with the stakeholders and within the government to make sure that no step is going to be a failure because we did not make necessary collateral changes. We have taken these steps to ensure that the impact is felt on the ground. She had also given an assurance to MSMEs that banks cannot refuse credit to MSMEs covered under the emergency credit facility. If refused, such instances must be reported. I will look into it. On market access, she had said that reciprocal arrangements are being asked with the countries with which we have opened up our markets. Reciprocity is a very critical point in our trade negotiations. Meanwhile, the primary sector has been showing satisfactory progress. The sowing area coverage under Karif crops has increased by 13.92% compared to last year in the country. Union Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said that agriculture and rural sectors have the inherent capabilities of lifting the country out of any crisis and that in the future also rural India and the farming community will play a leading role in achieving Prime Minister Narendra Modi's goal of an Atmanirbhar Bharat. At the conclusion of the application window of production-linked incentive scheme for manufacture of mobile phones in the country, Electronics and IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said that the scheme has been a huge success with applications received from global as well as domestic mobile phone manufacturing companies and electronic components manufacturers. As per the projections given by all these companies, 22 in numbers who have applied, they are going to produce mobile phone and components worth 11.5 lakh crores in the coming five years out of which products worth 7 lakh crore will be exported they are going to give job to 3 lakh indian direct job and close to 9 lakh indian indirect job therefore the production will increase, the export will increase, and also employment will increase. The gross GST revenue collected for the month of July 2020 is 87,422 crore rupees. The revenues for the month of June were higher than the current month. However, a large number of taxpayers had also paid taxes pertaining to February, March and April 2020 because of the relief provided due to COVID-19. Taxpayers with turnover less than 5 crore rupees continue to enjoy relaxation in filing of returns till September 2020. Newsnight Desk, DD India. So let's take a look at the green shoots of economic revival. Now we can see that the agriculture sector remains the foundation of the Indian economy. And we know that this year we are going to have about 103% of normal rainfall in the ongoing monsoon season. So that is going to be pretty good for the agriculture sector, which is already increasing. Increased its area and it's going to increase the output and production as well, the produce from agriculture. Reliance, the resilience of the Indian manufacturing sector is also something that we should uh, highlight because, uh, you know, the second... Uh, because of COVID, we saw that, you know, the PPEs uh, came out in large numbers that uh, we, the resilience shows the resilience of the manufacturing sector. Moving on then, India sees every crisis also as an opportunity. And uh, we can also see that uh, the Prime Minister had said, uh, talent force India's ability to reform, rejuvenate, 
uh, will lead global recovery. We are going a little back because, you know, we talked about the resilience. We see India seeing every crisis as an opportunity. And now what the Prime Minister also said, talent force, India's ability to reform, rejuvenate, will lead the global recovery. The Prime Minister also said that India remains one of the most open economies in the world. Now, demand, as we know, is coming from the rural areas. And that, we see, is already reviving. And that's the beginning of revival. Uh, increased government expenditure has caused this through Manrega. Also, several reforms in agriculture sector. Government is focused on doubling farmers' incomes by 2022. Also, we also know that the FMCG sector, uh, the production companies and the fast-moving consumer goods have expanded their production. That means there's a sign that there is offtake, that there is demand, and the supply is meeting that demand. Automotive sector, too, we saw the two-wheeler manufacturers are quite optimistic about uh, sales, and production was ramped up by 60 to 70 percent of the normal values, so we're getting back to normal. And four-wheelers, too, the production jumped in June uh, over May uh, quite significantly, about 40 percent. So petrol consumption continues to rise. Factory output has showed a recovery to 47.2 percent in June. That's important. And uh, will all this, it's going to increase further, in fact, in July. We know that because we see that the economy is picking up. Now, India is on the way uh, to a quick, sustainable economic recovery, we can conclude from these green shoots. We're going to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to discuss all this with guests. Do stay with us.